Okay, so before continuing to pursue this idea, uh, we should be clearer about what exactly the object of inquiry is from this perspective. So the question is, what is it precisely that we're studying? Okay, uh, what's the name of this baby? Fred. Fred, okay. So we're going to study this baby, Fred, uh, at different points in Fred's life from child to adulthood to find out about his linguistics pro uh, pro properties and we're going to use the scientific method. Um, and uh, a point that we have to make from the beginning though is that we're not going to build a science of this one baby. That's right, the object of inquiry is not this particular baby. It's not uniquely Fred. Uh, the question, what is Fred, or what is this baby, is not a scientific question. There's no Fredology, just as there's no Friskyology, nor Phytoology for dogs. There's no science of this zebra, nor of this bottle of liquid. Rather, we have the far more abstract question, what is a human, and how do you find out? So we're looking at, and we're studying Fred, and examining and attempting to determine his properties, but we're not developing a science of Fred. Uh, and in fact, there's no contradiction in, in this. Uh, physics can look at this rock, for example, if I toss it off the building to determine its, its uh, fall rate, but I'm not developing a theory of this uh, rock. Uh, I look at Fred to find out, hopefully, about the human linguistic system. Uh, okay, so we're looking at specific properties of Fred but we're really studying humans, specifically the linguistic system of humans. That's right, but in fact, no one studies entire humans. Um, so Fred is too small an object to be an object of scientific inquiry, but a human all at once is too big. Uh, so notice there's no department of humanology. That's too broad. So what do we do? We break it down into parts. Currently, with respect to humans, here's how science is proceeding. Humans are divided up into a set of organs and subsystems. For example, the standard organs include heart, liver, brain, skin, etc. The standard systems include a visual system, a digestive system, an endocrine system, a muscular system, etc. And there are also individual human social cognition systems, too. Uh, humanology just seems way too general. So, in fact, the Nobel Prize winning biologist Francois Yakov wrote, and this is number five on your handout, science looks for partial and provisional answers about those phenomena that can be isolated and well-defined. The beginning of modern science can be dated from the time when such general questions as how was the universe created, what is matter made of, what is the essence of life, were replaced by such limited questions as how does a stone fall? How does water flow in a tube? How does blood circulate in vessels? This substitution had an amazing result. While asking general questions led to limited answers, asking limited questions turned out to provide more and more general answers. And it's, it's the same here. What is a human is too broad. Nobody studies humans uh, all at once. and. Um, as you can see on the top of page two on the handout, um, Chomsky uh, uh, writes, in this connection, it's perhaps worthwhile to recall some further truisms. In rational inquiry, in the natural sciences or elsewhere, there's no such subject as the study of everything. Uh, rather, in rational inquiry, we idealize to selected domains in such a way we hope as to permit us to discover crucial features uh, of, of the world. So if you go to the hospital, you might go to cardiology or ophthalmology, but not humanology. Humans are divided up into these parts, at least for the purposes of science, scientific study. Yep, and it's important to dispel two criticisms of this hypothesized organology. Uh, one, to say that Daniel is divided up into distinct organs and subsystems is not to deny that Daniel is a whole person. Second, to say that the human is divided up into distinct subsystems is not to deny possible interactions between the distinct subsystems. In fact, in order to figure out how two systems interact, you need to figure out what the two systems are. Here's an example. 
I watch a scary movie and my heart rate goes up. That's system's interaction. The visual system processes retinal images. Another system interprets the images. And for some strange reason, in the comfort of my living room, eating popcorn, my amygdala is stimulated, a fear response is triggered, the adrenal glands are activated, and ultimately my heart rate goes up, and my linguistic system might even be activated, and I shout, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> so there are different systems that everybody acknowledges, but they also interact. So to sum up, humans are divided up into these interacting parts, these systems, and one of these parts is the linguistic system. So the object of inquiry is the linguistic organ of humans. Uh, we're using some of the methodological considerations of biology, namely a form of organology. We as humans are organized. We are a system of interacting subsystems, and language is one of these. Uh, that's a start. We've got some idea of what the object of inquiry is. Uh, what we're studying is an organ, the biological system of humans associated with what we call language. So language is, is inside humans and not cats uh, as far as we know.